And as far as the rate cycle, the interest rate cycle, if you look at history, and I actually had a value manager tell me this, who was cheering us on as, you know, as a lot of people were not, shall I say. And uh, he wrote a, his client and wrote an email saying, I have looked into this and it is not your ilk of stock that gets hurt during interest rate hiking cycles. It is mature growth, mature growth companies that uh, experience most of the pain. I think you'd be shocked to see how calm and focused everyone is. We're focused on our research. Are we getting this right? Uh, we have a five-year investment time horizon. So if you look at the last five years, including the first quarter waterfall performance, um, the last five years, we have handily outperformed the NASDAQ, the S&P. So five-year time horizon is not just looking back, but looking forward as well. And, um, and putting this recent performance into perspective, you'll note that during COVID, so from April, whenever the market bottomed, through February of 21, uh, our uh, flagship strategy was up almost 360%. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, 360%. Down 60% from that at our worst. Um, very tough. And, you know, I'm thinking about our clients, and I've been extremely gratified. We all have that for the most part, they've stuck with us. Last year, our net inflows were 17 billion. Most of that waited at the beginning of the year. And so they have felt the full force of this decline. Uh, and yet we inflowed last year and we're inflowing this year. I think that has uh, been shocking to a lot of our counterparts out there who have gone through periods like we've just experienced and have had massive outflows. And I think a few things are at work. Number one, our long-term time horizon is practically the first thing we say when we're talking to prospective investors. Number two, if I were to have told you in February or talked to you in February of 21, even at that point in time, uh, given our projections for the next five years, we expected our, port, our flagship strategy to deliver a 15% compound annual rate of return. So about double the market over, over, the, over time. Uh, today, after this decline, our projections have, if anything, they've increased because artificial intelligence is and breakthroughs are moving so much faster than we expected. So our expectations for future returns uh, have gone up as the prices have come down. So today uh, we expect, now consider the source, this is our research and these are our expectations and we could be wrong, but uh, whereas it was 15% last uh, February, that number today is 50%, 50% at a compound annual rate. And it's because what we believe the market does not understand is we have entered the sweet spot of exponential growth trajectories. Most of the market thinks in linear terms. Most of our careers, we've experienced primarily linear growth, you know, growth uh, that slows down, decays to the, the nominal GDP growth rate over time. We have a few experiences with exponential growth. Amazon is a very big one. When we were buying Amazon in 03, what we were saying to investors is, if you believed Amazon could grow anywhere in the 20 to 30% range for the next 20 years, would you buy it? You put that into a dividend discount model, you would buy that all day long. But that's not how people were thinking about it. Well, of course, we've had a lot of pain for a lot of reasons. Right. But we also have more problems. Russia, Ukraine, food, energy prices. We can help that. Our strategies are all about solving problems. Electric vehicles are going to help us move away from energy, right? Bitcoin mining as part of utility ecosystems mm -hmm. is going to accelerate the shift towards renewables. And the genomic revolution is going to help us grow food 
in areas maybe away from Ukraine as it's in quite a bit of turmoil, in other areas that are not as friendly environmentally to right, food, food production. So uh, innovation solves problems, that's all we do. We've got a lot of problems and inflation is another problem. We don't think it's gonna be long lasting, but if it is, and if one of the reasons is a labor shortage, automation, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. robotics solves problems. During risk off periods, we, we cut the name, number of names in our portfolio, consolidate, concentrate, to our highest conviction names because we know there are mistakes in the portfolio. This, this particular strategy came out of making many mistakes in the past. Mm. And so whenever, you know, whenever we go into a risk off period, I say to all our analysts and to Brett Winton, our, our director of research, I say, okay, now is the time. We have doubts and they're reflected in our scoring, but are they reflected strongly enough? Which names are we going to consolidate into? And the, the, the port, port and other side of that is, which names are we going to consolidate out of? So I think, I think doing that aggressively, uh, we shall see. You know, if we have concentrated towards names that, you know, really aren't truly disruptive and we find that our research was faulty, okay, then that will have been a big mistake. Uh, but, you know, and in terms of the rest of the rest of our tenure, you know what happens when we sell stocks because, you know, uh, we've made a mistake. We try and remember, what, okay, when we cut a score like that for management changes, let's have heightened sensitivity to the next management change because we should have sold the stock uh, when there was that management change. And I know that there are names uh, that we did sell for that reason or that we did not sell for that reason, and those would have been some of the biggest mistakes. But, you know, I've been in the business now for <laughs> 45 years, and so I've tried to bring to art all of the lessons learned, and I've learned a lot of lessons. I've made a lot of mistakes over time.